Hi folks, Dr. Dicek. It's Tuesday, uh, July 14th. Hope everybody is well, continuing with our educational forum on COVID and other healthcare issues. Um, as promised, I wanted to talk tonight about the vaccine issue um, <clears throat> and the vaccine development as there's a lot of exciting things happening, but uh, there's also, um, you know, things we have to be cautious about. And I wanted to speak about it tonight because I think, you know, initially there was a lot of um, discussion about rush to vaccine to make sure we get it out uh, quickly. And I think in the recent data, the recent literature, uh, there's now some uh, uh, issues that are being worked out and carefully reviewed before uh, the government or the FDA goes ahead and improve, approves any vaccine. I wanted to speak about the issue of vaccination tonight. So <clears throat> as we all spoke about before, there's 110 programs worldwide for vaccine development. These range from governmental programs to private industry to universities. Um, seven of the 110 to date have made it to human trials. Uh, four of those trials are ongoing in China. Uh, one is in the UK and two are here in the US. Those are the current human trials. Normally, from the time a vaccine is approved by the FDA, let's say, or the European uh, equivalent of the FDA, it takes about a year and a half for a vaccine to then get worked into what's called a vaccine national immunization program. Uh, also, we also know that to normally develop a vaccine, there are many, many years of study that goes on, and we've reviewed in the past phases one, two, and three, and what those mean. Uh, currently, we're in the process of entering the phase three trials here in the United States and in Europe. Uh, but here, because of the severity of the pandemic, because of the risk to human life and the large loss of human life and, and the effect on the economies worldwide, there has been a significant push to get a vaccine out even quicker. Uh, just to demonstrate to you how <clears throat> rapidly things are moving on the vaccine front, uh, Moderna, the company that um, one of the companies that the U.S. government has put not only their uh, money behind, but um, support and resources, because it's a relatively small company. Um, in January, January, uh, about January 12th or 13th, the Chinese uh, released for, to the public the actual genetic code or the sequence of the COVID-19 virus that was causing the Wuhan outbreak. Um, by January 13th or 14th, uh, Moderna uh, had developed what was called the messenger RNA 1273 vaccine code or sequence to the vac uh, gene sequence to the uh, proposed vaccine. Uh, and by February 7th of this year, uh, just within two and a half, three weeks of the time the gene was released for sequencing, um, the first batch of completed uh, new genetic code COVID-19 uh, vaccine was shipped to the National Institute of Health. Uh, and by uh, uh, mid-March, by March 15th or 16th, the NIH had already dosed uh, the first patient in the phase one trials of the Moderna vaccine. Uh, at this point, um, obviously the Moderna vaccine is about to enter phase three trials with large numbers of patients, supposedly in about the 30,000 person range. Uh, now the FDA is uh, talking about uh, as we've spoken about previously, there's been talk about getting the vaccine to market as early as the late fall, early winter, or early part of next year. Um, so what's the hang up with the vaccine? First, let's talk about what the Chinese are up to with their vaccine, because it's different from what we're doing. Two of the four uh, Chinese vaccine research programs involve what's called inactivated virus, uh, which means uh, it's actually a virus that starts out live. They inactivate it with a chemical uh, and cause an immune response. Uh, this is similar, let's say, to the MMR. The measles, mumps, rubella vaccine is a live attenuated virus. The Chinese are working on inactivated attenuated virus vaccines as well. Uh, the issue with the attenuated virus vaccine that the Chinese are currently testing and are in phase three trials for is that their subjects uh, pretty much all got sick with a mild form of a virus for three to five days, fever, cough, aches and pains, congestion. Um, so their trials are focused very much on the inactivated virus vaccine. Now that vaccine is not even being discussed here in the United States because 
quite frankly, the European and the United States vaccine uh, market population is not interested in a live virus attenuated vaccine at this point. I think there's too much fear and too much uh, apprehension about using any live attenuated virus for COVID. The Chinese, on the other hand, are doing it for a different reason. And the reason is uh, that they claim that their early studies using the uh, glycoprotein um, mRNA uh, type technology that's being developed didn't get enough of an antibody kick. And they felt that the in inactivated or attenuated virus vaccine that they're developing will actually um, serve the larger population better, giving more antibody response, more immunogenicity. Um, now, the um, this is a, a big issue because uh, here in the United States, as we're entering the phase three studies, um, there is some concern uh, that the, uh, the kick of the vaccine or the immunogenicity or the amount of neutralizing antibodies that are able to be made from the mRNA uh, type of vaccine development that we're using uh, doesn't have a tremendous antibody response yet to the point where it could be comp considered a very successful vaccine. Uh, if you look at the flu vaccine, for instance, it's about 60% effective uh, for the average season of flu, meaning 60% of the population will be pretty much fully protected from getting the flu, or if they do get the flu, they'll get a very mild version of it. Um, the current immunogenicity uh, of the COVID studies has not been released yet, but most researchers are indicating that it's clearly shy of that 60% immunogenicity mark. So it appears that that is why the Chinese are focusing their efforts on an inactivated uh, attenuated virus because they feel that the vaccine response is much more robust, although theirs comes with a significant risk of short-term symptoms for three to five days after taking it. Um, there are even elements within the United States and European um, scientific community now that are looking to add uh, in the interim until we get a great vaccine in the early winter, um, uh, vaccines which can cause nonspecific immunity. And we spoke about those on this forum. One of them was the BCG or the tuberculosis vaccine uh, can actually give some nonspecific immunity for COVID. That's a vaccine that's used in many countries throughout the world, um, not currently used in the United States, but it's something they're looking at. Uh, and the oral polio vaccine, which unfortunately doesn't exist in any great numbers anymore. We stopped using oral polio vaccine years ago in favor of the inactivated polio vaccine. So, but the oral polio vaccine is another example of a vaccine that could give us some background or nonspecific immunity to COVID. Um, so there's discussion now about whether those two vaccines, the BCG or the oral polio vaccine, should be given at least to healthcare workers this fall as a way to cover them through the early part of the COVID season if it coincides with the flu season. That's not been determined yet, but that's what's being discussed. So what's the hang up with um, the vaccines? Uh, why is there so much concern about how the development, the safety, et cetera? So all of this concern goes into the discussion about the phase three, the final part of the vaccine development. Uh, phase three, where they're gonna give it to about 30,000 people per vaccine trial, um, the importance of following people for a long time after a phase three study is that you have to follow a population of people who are given the vaccine <clears throat> who are actually exposed to the active virus. So let's say if we had the vaccine available now to be tested in a, 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 you know, a place like Miami where there's large outbreak of disease, that would be an ideal place to get 30,000 people to be tested currently for exposure uh, uh, while they're undergoing the phase three trials. Um, the concern with the safety of the vaccine, and this is actually, I'm proud to say that the United States government is talking about this aggressively, uh, is that there is a concept uh, called uh, immune enhancement of infection, where uh, if you make the vaccine the wrong way, you can actually cause uh, an aggravated uh, response or a worse disease in the recipient of the vaccine when they do get exposed to the infection. And the model for that was the 2017 dengue fever vaccine, which was developed by many companies, but one of them was the Sanofi uh, vaccine, which was developed in 2016. It was given to large numbers of uh, children in the third world. And what they discovered because of this immune enhancement of infection effect uh, it actually caused 
uh, worse disease and very large number of children uh, who were given the vaccine who never had the disease before. Uh, for individuals who had exposure to the infection before, they actually did very well with the vaccine, but in countries where it wasn't endemic, children suffered a much higher degree of hospitalization after receiving the vaccine. So that model taught us a lesson uh, in terms of vaccine safety that you must get it right before giving these vaccines to large members of the population. Uh, there's also the concern because of specifically of the multi-inflammatory system disease in children uh, that we have to get the vaccine uh, right because uh, we don't want to have a situation uh, where we have a partial immune response that's not good enough to kick the immune system into uh, responsiveness uh, and then we end up with complications similar to multi-system uh, inflammatory disease like we saw in kids. So there are some safety concerns when you do phase three development. And it's for this reason that the government is now pushing very hard and the researchers are pushing very hard to extend the observation of these phase three recipients for a much longer period of time. They may actually go well into the 2021 year. So I think in the end, the FDA is gonna approve some form of the mRNA American studied vaccines probably to be released in the late fall or early winter. Unfortunately, I don't know if it'll have the great immunogenicity or the great kick antibody response that we're hoping for, uh, but they are gonna modify and revise those vaccines for the following season so we get a better vaccine. Um, so nobody really knows for sure, but what I can say with uh, great reassurance is that the people responsible for vaccine development and vaccine safety and the people overseeing it at the FDA are doing a phenomenal job at making sure that they are building a safe vaccine, that they're gonna approve safe vaccines. And this speaks to everybody in our population. Um, this is the primary example of how far we go with vaccine safety. There, there could be just such a tendency to release a vaccine too quickly and not get the appropriate response or put people at greater risk. It's not what's going on here. The United States government, the European equivalent of the FDA, is working very cooperatively together to make sure that this is a safe vaccine. We're just not there yet, and they need more time to observe patients during phase three follow-up uh, studies, which could take several months. So I'm uh, asking what everybody is asking, that everybody be patient, let the experts and the scientists do what they do, which is find, come up with great uh, studies to support the use of the vaccine, and then everybody will be safer in the coming season. So that's it for tonight. We went over a lot of information tonight. The good news is vaccine studies are moving ahead full blast. Uh, the other good news is that despite certain safety concerns, they're being addressed and nobody is going to approve a vaccine until we have full reassurance that we're not going to see a similar effect to the one that happened with the dengue fever vaccine in 2016. So uh, I hope everybody has a good evening. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Have a great day.